Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. It's time for the Radical 2023 review and I've been testing two different versions, the MP Mid Plus and the Pro. The MP is lighter, easier to use, more forgiving. The Pro offers a bit better control, slightly faster through the air thanks to the slightly thinner beam. Those are the two different options that I've tested. There will also be team and team light options coming out later. I think the Radical is supposed to be launched in February. So if you're curious about this line, they should soon be out for purchase or at least pre-order. So what's new from the 360 plus version? There is a review of that one on this channel. The Oxetic technology and what is Oxetic is not something that most people will notice. This is not a mold change, meaning that the racket structure is the same, the, the beam is the same. The Radical is very much the same except for the Oxetic technology. What is it and how does it work? I'm going to read straight out of the marketing material because it's quite technological. Oxetic constructions show a unique deformation compared to non-oxetic constructions. Due to their internal properties, oxetic constructions widen when a pull force is applied and contract when squeezed. The bigger the applied force, the bigger the oxetic reaction. Does that mean anything to you? Probably not. But the feeling is the same around all the oxetic rackets I've tried. They've updated the speed, the prestige, and the extreme so far, and more lines to come as they go from 360 plus tech to oxetic technology. And it's not a huge change, but I do feel like the rackets play a tad more stable. Maybe they feel slightly more solid. For me, that could be a big thing because I test everything, but for most players, it might not be quite worth the upgrade if you're considering buying new rackets. So that's just good to keep in mind. The oxetic change is slight, but it's uh, noticeable if you're really into rackets. And if you're watching this channel, you might be. But I just wanted to point that out, that it might not be worth paying a lot of money to get the update if you're happy with the current version. Quick commercial break. Thanks to our sponsor, Fuzzy Yellow Balls, for the singles playbook. I bought it over a year ago before they had in mind to sponsor Tennis Nerd, but now they sponsor a few videos, and I really like uh, this product. It uh, shows you patterns of play, how to beat pushers, counter punchers, serving volleyers, attacking players, and so on. It gives you more of an understanding of how to construct a point in tennis, and I think that's great. Comes with a booklet with accompanying videos that you can find on the website. Great product, check it out if you want. The link is in the description. Let's look at the specs of the MP and the Pro. They are unchanged, pretty much. It's the same mold, drill pattern. I haven't seen the stiffness ratings. I know the head tech team, they're not so happy about stiffness ratings because it measures the stiffness around like seven different locations of the racket. It doesn't tell the whole story whether it's comfortable or not. Uh, a little bit more too much attention might be put on RA ratings, as you see in many reviews. So they don't really like that. And that's probably why it's not highlighted on the website. I would have wanted some swing weight calculations on the website, because that's my biggest pet peeve when they missing on the quality control that the swing weight might be off. Uh, so the MP has a CPI of 400. What is CPI? It's the power scale of head rackets. The CPI scale is from 100, which is the most control, to 1000, which is the most power. So the Radical, as you can see here, even the MP is a very control-oriented racket. It's on 400, similar to the Boom Pro. And as you know, Head has so many rackets in their lineup that many range within the same power level, which makes choosing a racket from Head quite difficult. But the CPI scale should help you understand a bit more of the power level. So the weight unstrung, 300 grams, 1619 pattern, but pretty dense pattern. It's a very controlled racket. The radicals are all about control, I would say. So uh, good to keep that in mind. You need to generate your own power with these frames. 98 square inch head size, 32 centimeter balance, standard length and a beam with or cross section of 20, 23 and 21 millimeter. If we look at the Pro, you can see that the power level is a bit lower. It's CPI 200, which means the Radical Pro has the same power ranking as the Prestige Pro. So this is a very low powered racket with a thinner beam. You can see it's almost towards a Prestige territory with the beam of 20, 21.5 and 21 millimeter. Radical MP has a bit of a thicker beam in places and that creates more power. Obviously, this can all be tailored with customization, but there's some extra weight in the handle on the Pro. When stringing the new Radicals, I tried a few different setups as I usually do. I tried a full bed of Headlinks Tour, the orange version, which is supposed to be the, the string of choice for these rackets because they look pretty decent together. And I also tried Headhawk Power, the new string, 
that was heavily delayed due to this uh, flooding of the factory. That's why I haven't been able to do any giveaways or anything. I hope to get something going, but yeah, they really ran out of strings. Uh, I have a few sets, but that's about it. And we wanted to send out a bunch of test sets. So uh, sorry for that. Hybrid setup as well with X1 by face and Lynx Tor Orange. So I tried a few different setups. And for most players, I think a hybrid setup would make sense because you open up a bit more power, a bit more comfort, because these frames are semi stiff. I wouldn't say that they are harsh on the arm. Uh, the MP is, is softer as a frame, but they're not the most comfortable rackets. And if there was anything on the wish list for me, because I really like these frames, I like the radicals, it would be that they would reduce the stiffness a bit. That's my personal opinion. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, a few points down, whether that's on the RA scale or just open up a bit more of that plusher feel that you feel from the older radicals, going back to the IG radical, uh, which was a great frame, uh, but could have a bit more forgiveness, then then I'd really enjoy it. I still like these frames, but that would be uh, on the wish list for me. Now they kind of go in between the Graphene first generation, which was quite stiff, the stiffest radical of all time, and that IG radical. So it kind of straddled in between, which is making it a modern radical, I guess, but that would be on my wish list as a racket connoisseur, or whatever you want to call it. I usually string the strings around 23 kilos as a reference. If I add a hybrid, I usually go a bit higher on the multi-filament or gut, of course. Um, that's what you should do. If you want to learn more about rackets, go to tennisner.net where there's all kinds of resources. You can check out our consultation service under the help page. You can buy our course, the Road to the Right Racket, if you want to learn more about rackets and get recommendations on how you get to your perfect racket setup. So how do these radicals play? And straight off the bat, you can say that these are very versatile frames. They offer a good balance of power, spin, control, stability. They don't shine in any department, I would say. They're not excelling in any category. It's a balanced frame. That's the best way I can put it. It suits players who can generate their own power, who want to really feel that the racket gives you exactly what you put into it. Definitely on the spectrum of a control racket. It's not going to give you loads of power, but if you like kind of a blade or a Technifiber TF40, this is the, the frame in the head lineup. And I would say that most players would be happy with the MP. Gives you room for customization if needed. Uh, stable enough in stock form. It played really nicely in that sense. A little bit softer than the Pro. The Pro is for highly advanced players, I would say. You don't need to get the Pro unless you're a very advanced player. The MP does most things as well, if not better in most cases. The Pro has a slightly thinner beam, so for players who really like that, uh, I think it makes sense. And also, I think some players prefer a more headlight balance without tinkering or customizing the racket. Then the Pro is the choice for you. But for me, the MP uh, is better, and it's a realization I've come over time because when I tried the previous versions i felt like the pro was more my style of racket but as i've um, played more and more tennis and improved as a player i feel like a slightly lighter frame is better for me overall what's the difference between oxetic and the 360 plus it's very very slight if at all i'm, I'm would be interested to hear when players compare these what they feel as, as a difference in the sensation or stability power and so on I do feel like the, the stability of these frames, they feel a little bit more stable. I'm not sure if that's the supposed reaction. That's what I feel. If I feel like the sweet spot is maybe a tad bigger because they, they feel like a more solid uh, construction. Uh, and that's a good thing. But is it worth uh, spending a lot of money on? Not sure, to be honest. I just wanted to, to get, point that out, that if you're happy with the Radical MPs from the previous generation, you might not need to upgrade unless you really like the new cosmetic, which I think is, is good. It's, it's a better cosmetic than the previous generation. That's, uh, that's my opinion, at least. So I did enjoy the MP more. I felt like that was easier to use, very versatile frame. I feel 100% confident when I play with this frame that I, if I go for a shot, I know where it's going to land. And that's something I really like. There's not like an overly muted sensation. There's nothing of that extreme dampening going on. It's a very dependable racket. Could have been a slightly softer. Yes, I feel like that, that could have been the case. Full bed of poly wasn't my favorite, but with a hybrid setup, I, I really like it. And uh, it's still a great frame. Not much has changed. The racket remains good. Why change a great thing, right? But I feel sometimes that they can do a bit more, that it could have been more of a change. But I think this is Head's strategy. Now that they go from 360 plus to Oxetic, that they don't want to change too much. Uh, players really happy with the frames. They're selling really well, apparently. 
so why change something that ain't broken? I think that is the strategy. Whether you like it or not, that's another thing. It's not the most fun for us playtesters because there's not that much to point out. But the Radical remains a great frame because it's just very dependable. It does most things pretty well and a very solid contender of a control racket. Those are my thoughts about the new Radicals. I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you want first impressions about new frames and more stuff about my personal racket journey and testing, go to patreon.com slash tennisnerd and subscribe. That would really support the channel and you get more and more content every week. That's all. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.